Hey everybody, Dan here from Sherp ET. We're going to try to get this uh, Sherp fixed again. Again, it broke on me. The Sherp is broken. Um, I was just backing out of the shed. When I backed out of the shed right here, I don't know if you can see that with the light behind us. All of a sudden it sounded like there was a gunshot and I knew right away because unfortunately this has happened before in the front of the Sherp. I knew right away that the tube popped off because the bearing froze up. So we gotta get that thing changed and go from there. The parts are supposed to be here by UPS uh, by 7 p.m. So we will see, I don't know if I'll get that far. So on this side, I gotta take the oil container out for oiling the chains, that's what this is for. So I'll take this off, get it put away. I've already done that once and to do that, you just pull off this little rubber strap here, and then there's just a bracket that's actually was riveted to the whole frame. I cut off the rivets, and I put in uh, stainless steel screws and nuts. Um, so I'll get this thing off, then I have to take off this bracket right here, and then this is the part that's got to come off. And that part is damn near $500. Um... Hopefully the bearings are going to be pressed in when it gets here. That is the plan. Um, we will see. So, I'm going to get this done, this done, and I'll be back with you in a second. He is here. Yes, it's cool. Got it from the Canadian Off-Road Center. Uh, got it in two days, so that's pretty cool. Well, unfortunately, I got the wrong part. Part of the challenge with Sherps are is there's so many different models and all of them are put together a little bit differently and unfortunately this is just not the one for mine. I do not have this nipple on the end. It's all one piece. So what I got going there is I'm taking a right angle grinder and I'm grinding off the outside of that bearing and then basically prying it off. I did get it so it moves. I don't know if I can do it with my hand. That's so dirty and stuff. Um, so that's there. The other thing that I did, which was kind of cool, again, I had to take that bracket out, is I took um, and I closed off the entire inflation system tubing and that's in the bottom of it um, and I sealed that off which is stuff I could find at the local hardware store and by doing that then I was able to fill up those other three tires so one of the thoughts that we had is if this thing doesn't work out is I may take that same type of process and put that off of this seal this off and then put um, like a, a, a regular bike, like um, pneumatic thing that you could put air into, just like a tire. And then I could be able to fill up that tire and probably get through this weekend. So that might be an option too. But time will tell. I would try to videotape this, but it's virtually impossible. Yeah, definitely a pain in the rumpus. No more breakage, Sherp. No more breakage. Success. I got this cap off. And that cap used to be like this. And that was going on here. What we got going here is a bearing, spacer, spacer, bearing. Now I got to get those darn things off of there. So again, a little bit more elbow grease and uh, we'll go from there. Still have the bottom of those bearings still stuck on this shaft, and initially I thought that that's the way that the shaft was. They're on so damn tight. Oh, this is going to be fun. Well, I guess if you do this a couple of times, it goes a heck of a lot faster because you're not so nervous about wrecking something. But you can see I basically ground ground through this uh, outer part of the bearing, and eventually it cracked as I was prying it away from here. So now I got to clean this up. And I'm planning to use a variety of different grit sandpaper. We'll go from there. Well, I got the shaft cleaned up. And putting that old bearing on when I took off. 
goes on pretty smooth so I think I have it clean enough and done enough. Just to give you an idea of the mayhem that was created, look at all parts of the bearings in those spacers. Very interesting design. I think that the outside one is the one that actually failed. Pain in the butt to take them off. Hopefully it's going to go together smoothly. So the bearing cap that was originally sent was the cap that I actually had to install because the other cap was no longer available, which required me also to purchase an additional hose. I was able to get those bearings installed. So like I've shown before, hopefully this thing's going to be clean enough. What we're going to do is put some grease just on the outside of it so it slides on there a little bit better. We'll get that whole thing all lubed up. slide that bearing over the top of this you can shut that off because this didn't take a while yet unless there's all right, so again, there was a bracket over here. We took that bracket out, and I'm going to try to get by without taking out all these wires. And if you look down here, you can see um, that's that cap again that we put on. And that cap is keeping air in those other three tires right now. I'm going to leave that on and put this on first, and then eventually we'll attach that new hose on to there. This is really tight to get okay. down through here, so we'll get through. Got it. So Dan, I hear you got some good news. We did. We finally got that damn uh, bearing on. And it was crazy on how much effort it took to get that the shaft that the bearing was sliding on to smooth enough. So I used sandpaper. First I used, um, what the heck was it? 80 grit, 120, and then 240. That did not work. Okay. Then I used files that I had laying around. Um, I actually used the shirt file that came with it, which is actually probably one of the better ones. That one, and I got some more files and used some old files. And after a long period of time, I don't know if you can see that from here, I got the bugger back on again. But now the challenge is so again, this before did not have that little nipple like on the bottom so a smaller hose can go on it. Um, so I got to figure out how to mount that. And this is the way that it used to mount this over this. Well, that isn't going to work now. This, I think, right here is going to go on to here or this one. I don't know which one yet. Okay. Well, it was pretty much a pain in the butt, but I was able to modify the old bracket for that new system. So this right here then is going to go like this. And then I think I'm gonna straighten this out and put it on here or this bearing also has this on this side. So I'm not sure which way I'm gonna do that yet. Maybe this way, probably that way. And then we'll do it like that. Get that on there, get the other two lined up, and go from there. And there's no way I can record that while I'm doing it. So again, this is the device that we came up with to keep the air pressure inside of, I'll say it, the inflation tire system. These pipes that are right there. Um, 
closed. So in other words, I could have one flat tire and have the other three filled up. So that's the thing that we made to do that. Um, now the next step is take that darn thing off and then try to get this hose back on. But the challenge is going to be, is it extremely tight? So I'm going to give it a little zap with the heat gun and hopefully it'll pop on. Well, with an insane amount of twisting and turning and using the heat gun and pushing here and pushing there, we got this baby on. Let's hope it works. A little bit nervous about this whole bend thing, but I think it's going to be okay. Just got to put the bracket back on for uh, the oil tank. Again, that was riveted on. I had to cut that off, but I've already taken that off once, so we're getting there. So we got her all assembled. Not tested it yet. I want to just make sure that I've hooked up those oil pumps in the correct direction. We'll pump up the tires. And then I still have that left um, brake caliper there that uh, I want to put those ceramic brakes in. Then we should be done. Well, I was able to get those ceramic brakes installed, made a huge difference. But this overall project was very, very difficult, very tight space to work. If I would have been able to use the original hose, it would have been a hell of a lot easier. But we did make it work. Everything testing revealed, everything should be good. So the Sherp should be ready for action. All that work to be able to do this, sometimes I wonder if it's worth all the effort. Well, in any event, we're coming to an end of this video. Hope you liked it. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. A lot of work to do these videos and to be able to be recognized for all that work is greatly appreciated. Let me know if there's anything you have any questions on. Uh, take care, everyone, and have a great day.